maybe a short worksheet video for the worksheet for the section 4.7 and you're asked to estimate square roots here and the first thing you look at is the number underneath the radical a perfect square it's not 7 is not a perfect square there are no two integers two identical integers when multiplied together can get you 7 so then you try to find the two closest perfect squares to 7, one right below, one above. Can someone tell me what those two perfect squares are? The one right below is 4. The one right above is 9. So you have your list of perfect squares, 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, and so on. And 4 is the smallest one that's right below 7, and 9 is the biggest one that's right above 7. Then you need to figure out what is the answer to each of these. So for square root 4, I can write as 2 to the second power. Because that's the exponential form of 4, the principal exponential form. And then what I can do, because this radical is to the second power, even though it doesn't have the 2, I can cancel out the radical and the exponent. I can do the same thing for the 9. I can write 9 in its exponential form, which is 3 squared. And again, I can cancel out the radical and the exponent because they're the same power. That leaves me with just two square root answers. 2 for the 4, 3 for the 9. Now when we estimate, we're going to do a rough estimate here. So 7 is in between 4 and 9. So the answer to the square root of 7 is going to be between these two. So what's in between 2 and 3? 2.5 is somewhere in the middle there, and that's good enough for us. Is that the actual you know, answer? It, the actual answer is probably going to be a little bit closer to 9, so maybe 2.6, but this is good enough for us. Questions on number 1? Alright, let's take a look at number 2, which is right here. Now, number 2 is pretty similar to number 1. Again, is 20 a perfect square? It is not. So what are the two perfect squares that are closest to 20? One below, one above. If you said that the one right below 20, the perfect square is 16, you're correct. It's the closest perfect square that's right below 20, and the one right above it is 25. 4 times 4, 5 times 5. I'm going to do that. I'm going to write them in their exponential forms right up here because I need some room. So I can write 16 as 4 squared. I can then also write 25 as 5 squared. What's my next step? If you said cancel out the radical and the exponents for both of those, you're absolutely correct. And that's what I'm going to do. And what do I get when I do that? 4 as the square root answer for this, and 5 as the square root answer for this. My 20 is somewhere in between 16 and 25, so my, the answer to square root of 20 is going to be between these two as well. And what's in between 4 and 5? 4 and a half. It's going to be a little bit closer to 16, but again, good enough for our purposes. Questions on 2? Let's take a look at number 3. Is 55 a perfect square? 
No, that means this is not going to come out evenly. So we have to find, we have to estimate. So let's find the two perfect squares closest to 55. Can you tell me what they are? The smallest one is 49. It's right below 55, and it's a perfect square, 7 times 7. And the one that's right above it is 64 which is 8 times 8. So I'm going to write them up here again. So 49 in its exponential form can be written as 7 squared negative 7 squared as well. We're going with our principal uh, exponential forms, the positive ones. And 64 can be written as 8 squared and then, of course, since both the radical and the exponent are of the same power, I'm going to cancel out this and this, this and this. The radical and the exponent, same power, they're opposites, they're gone. Which, of course, leaves me with 7 as the answer to this, 8 as the answer to that. So I'm looking for... 55, the square root of 55, which is in between these two. So the answer for this is going to be in the between these two as well. So it's in between 7 and 8. 7.5, just about. I'd say it's probably a little closer to... I don't know. It's about, it's about eight, right up there. I think it's a little closer to the 49, but it's good enough for our purposes. Questions on three? All right, let's take a look at the last one. Number four. Is 11 a perfect square? It is not. So can someone tell me what are the two perfect squares that are nearest to 11, both one above and one below? Right below 11 is the closest one is 9, which is 3 times 3. Right above it, 16. So, what I re I'm not going to rewrite them there. I'm just going to take a shortcut. What's the answer to, what's the perfect square to 9? You should be able to tell me that by now. 3. Because 3 squared, the exponent and the radical go away. What about for the 16? 4. 4 squared or 4 to the second power. The second power and the radical will cancel out. The 4 will come out. And what's in between 3 and 4? Three. 3.5. Now, 11 is definitely closer to 9 than 16, so the answer is probably more like 3.4, maybe even 3.37, something like that. But again, we're estimating, and that's good enough for the estimate. Questions on 4? All right, let's take a look at number 5 on the upper left corner. Is 110 a perfect square? You probably get the pattern. None of these are perfect squares. So what are the two closest ones? One above, one below. The one below it is actually 100, 10 times 10. It's the closest perfect square that's right below 110, or 110. What about right above it? 121, which is 11 times 11. Someone tell me what is the perfect square or the square root answer to this and this. Since this is 10 squared or 10 to the second power, I can, you know, I'm going to rewrite though just in case someone needs that extra help. So I can write 100 as 10 to the second power, which then we can cancel out. I want to make sure you guys are 
understanding why I do what I do. And for the 121, I can write it as, you can write it as 11 to the second power, which again, you can cancel out the power of 2 and the radical to the second power. And in this case, a 10 comes out. In this case, an 11 comes out. So my answer is going to be right in between the 10 and the 11. And this one's pretty much right in the middle. So what's in the middle there? 10.5, which is my pretty close estimate. Questions on 5? All right, number six, same thing. That's not a perfect square. So you're asked to find the smallest and the biggest. So can someone tell me what is the smallest one? One that's right, the perfect square that's right below 130. 121, or 11 times 11. What about one that's right above this? I haven't told you what that is yet. But you can guess what's right after 11 times 11. 12 times 12, or 144. So I can rewrite this as 11 squared. I can rewrite this as 12 squared. Then I go ahead and cancel out the powers of 2 and the radicals. And I'm left with 11 here, 12 there. And since 130 is right in between 121 and 144, my answer is going to be in between these two as well. And what's in between 11 and 12? 11 and a half. And I think that's going to be pretty close. Questions on number six. In that case, let's do the last one. For the last problem you're asked, essentially do it in reverse. Uh, it's the reverse estimate. You're told that the square root of 64 is 8, the square root of 81 is 9. That's all correct. And in the middle of 8 and 9, you have the square root answer 8.5. So what can be under this radical that will get you 8.5 as the answer? Does anyone have a, an idea? So we're going in reverse. If 8.5 is between 8 and 9, whatever is under the radical is going to be between 64 and 81. So somewhere in between there. And you could have wrote a lot of different things. So something in the uh, mid to low 70s probably would work. Um, you could have wrote. So I'll give you at least three different versions of the answer that would all work, I would think. So you could have maybe wrote 73, maybe you wrote 74, maybe you wrote 75, or maybe even something else, maybe 72, maybe 76. You don't want to get too close to either one of these. Maybe even something low like 71 would work as well. But again, you want something in the middle of 64 and 81. That's obviously not a decimal. So that's what I would write. And the reason I wrote this is because if my answer is in between the other two answers, then what's under whatever's underneath the radical has to be between what is under the radical of the two problems I'm comparing to. And all of these numbers are in between, so any of these would work. 71 would work, 76 would work, probably even 70 would work. But again, you want to stick to something that's closer to in between these. Questions on 7? Thank you.